pause for thought and join in the barking with Darren Rowe on The Mindful Dog. Relax and unwind, but stay informed. It's the Sunday Cafe with Mel Homer on Magic Talk. It is time to talk dogs. Joining me in our Hamilton studios is Darren Rowe, mindfulness for dogs, canine behaviourist. Morning to you, Darren. Good morning, Mel. What a beautiful day it is in Hamilton. And how does it feel? What are you doing with all that freedom? Oh, I'm, I'm out. Uh, I'm actually working, trying to catch up with the uh, three weeks of not being able to train people, <laughs> to I, be honest. I was thinking about that. It must be, it must be quite busy for you, sort of give <sighs> everything back on so track. I'm just trying to catch up, um, get a hold of everybody. So if there's any of my clients out there that haven't spoken to me, please, please, please email me. <laughs> and yeah, Darren will be <laughs> there hard. to sort your animals out because I'm sure also a lot of people have issues that they've noticed that need addressing oh. after lockdown. I have had quite a few emails and I, and I have to admit I'm struggling to get through them all. Um, mainly separation anxieties, behaviours that are suddenly, aggressive behaviours that have suddenly appeared mm. because the dogs haven't, or have seen, um, well, haven't seen lots of dogs for ages. <coughs> so yeah, so definitely. There's stuff going on. Now, if you do have a question about your dog for Darren, then you can text it in now, 3920, or better yet, Give us a call, 0800 844 747 for the next 20-odd minutes. We will take your calls and your texts. And we're going to talk, too, a little bit about uh, something that could make the most difference, you reckon, to your yeah. dog's training. Yeah, I think um, it's one of those things that professional dog trainers do, and they don't even think about it, and they, they do it all the time, is they use a crate. And it's one thing I've noticed um, when I've been working with clients with puppy preschools and, and with um, older dogs, that the most people don't want to use a crate for their dog and they think of it as a cage and they're quite unwilling to put their dog in a cage but but i would say it's the one thing that professional dog trainers use that makes the most difference to their training and the 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 way that their dog interacts with people with other dogs and and, and all that kind of stuff um <clears throat> and there's there's many many reasons why using a crate is so important for your dog but probably one of the the biggest reasons is it it gives your dog a space to be a calm space okay and and the problem if you think about and different problems with behaviours. The reason why dogs are badly behaved is because they get too excited um, or they mm. get aggressive. So, And they've not been taught how to relax. So if you give them a crate and you give them a really nice space, calm space to be, then they actually learn how to calm down. And if you do that from when they're a puppy, they're really excited and then they can go and calm down. They're really excited. And they, they learn that emotional control, I guess, which is probably the, the biggest thing that a dog that's got behavioural issues doesn't have. Mm, and it can be their safe space. I know that my dog quite often, yeah. she will go to, you know, she sort of digs herself under, she goes under desks or she sort of yeah. slots down beside the sofa in a little dark spot. They like it, don't yeah. they? Their little well, nests. Yeah. Well, if you think about the sort of, the, if, we, if we've got such a things as wild dogs, obviously domestication has changed, changed our dogs quite a lot. But if you were to go and look at the wild dogs, they they live in that den. So when they're puppies, when they're small dogs, they, they live in that, that den and that's their safe place, isn't it? Um, and, and they're just trying to find that when they get stressed out, they try and find something. They always go under the beds when they're scared, don't they? So if you give them that place and you make it a really nice... Um, we cover it with a blanket to make it really quite dark. They'll just go in there and just chill out, totally relax, and, and that's just going to allow them to come down off that sort of stressful situation or that excitement. And then they're, they're, much, more, they're much more easy to train, to be mm, honest, and much mm. nicer to be around. Let's talk more about crates in just a couple of ticks because we do have a quarter on the line. If you of do course. have a call for Darren, 0800 844 747 is an you can text us one if you want. 3920. Uh, Diane, morning to you. You're on with Darren. Hi, is it Diane, is it? Yes. yes. Good morning, Diane. Oh. Hi, Darren. It's, um, as I say, it's Diane here. Um, look, we have a rescue. Um, I've, we've been told he's three years old now. He's a big dog. And the only time he's a beautiful creature and we love him dearly, the only time he acts up is when he's in the car. And he just goes ballistic if he sees another dog, or if he sees a person walking a dog, or if he sees a person walking. <laughs> any any oh, any excuse <clears throat> to go ballistic in the car, he goes ballistic. What so, can we do? Yeah, so stop. so is he is he like that when he's not in the car? So if you're just walking on leads? Absolutely totally opposite personality. He is a beautiful oh, okay. soul in the oven dearly. But in the car, he's just a totally different. And it's not until we're going past somebody who's either walking their dog or, or even just walking themselves or on a bike or something. Hmm. And um, I've been told to crate him, but he's too big. He can't now oh, right. crate three years his, old. He's too his old crating, to crate. 
Well, crating would be a good idea. If you've got to think about with crates now, they don't have to have massive amounts of room when they're crating. As long as they can stand up in the crate, that's the most important thing. It depends how big he is, obviously. But but it is a nicer, it is it is a really good way to calm them down in a car because you can take away the stimulus. Basically what's happening there is that he's, he's getting really, really excited. Everything's moving 100 times faster than it normally would. He can't really work things out, so he's just getting overstimulated, and that's what the barking's all about. Um, you can do some things with clicker training so you can do what we call extinguisher behaviors but there has to be a pause in the barking when there's a pause you can click and say that's a good thing it takes a bit of time with that one you probably want to get a bit of help with the trainer but your quick fix will be a crate unfortunately um just might mean that you have to put your down your seat down for a while and just have the crate in there just to get through it <laughs> i was going to say with his size in my car a crate wouldn't fit <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't fit. Okay. No, um, the other thing is, the other thing is, he may have a bit of a negative association with the car. So perhaps feed him in the car, make the car a really nice place to be, and then he might be and a bit more relaxing. Do some do some massage in there with him, get him really chilled out, start to take away the stress. But but it will be the movement and the speed that you're going. So um, yeah. maybe take him take him to a car park where there's dogs walking past, but the car's not moving, and start there, and then slowly ramp it up. <laughs> it's a hard one. Get a trainer in to help with that one, definitely. <laughs> I definitely need another person to help me because I'm yeah. the driver. <clears throat> exactly, and that's that's where the problem is. And but one thing one thing you don't want to do is tell him off and tell him to be quiet because that's just going to make it worse because you're barking with him. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it gets to that stage, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, <I> know. <laughs> <We get laughs> definitely try, definitely try. And just put the radio on, yeah. put the radio on as well, quite loud. That sometimes works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, thank you, Darren. Thank you no very worries. much. Look, we'll, we'll keep trying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank we'll you. Do. Hey, good luck, no Diane. That sounds like quite the uh, quite the issue there. That's it uh, is difficult. It is difficult because you're you're driving. Of course, you have to be concentrating. Yeah. Did you know there's quite a few accidents that are caused by dogs barking oh, in cars and um, disrupting the own, uh, the uh, driver. My first my first car accident that I had, and it was just after I got my license, was because my dog jumped over the front seat, distracted yeah, me. I know. Gosh. And I and I drove down a bank. No one was hurt, but you know it was uh, <laughs> it was it was yeah. a, uh, I didn't want to call mum and dad, so I called my sister and told her instead. Oh, eight hundred eight double four. They know now. Yeah, they do. <laughs> 0800 844 7. Well, they, they knew when they saw the mini that I'd been driving him. 0800 844 747 is the number. 3920 is the text. Another call for you on the line, Darren. Hey, Rochelle, morning to you. You're on with Darren. Yeah, good morning. Um, Hi, Rochelle. I have four dogs and right. I love them dearly. Yeah. Um, they're very well trained. They, you know, they have their minty moments. And we made the mista- mistake of um, dog sitting an elderly dog. Oh, okay. Now, what happened is my younger dog, and she's a bit minty, I mean aggressive, yep. she attacked this poor old dog. We were two right. months into it. There was no warning. Um, she was five <laughs> metres away. There was no hackles up. There was no growling. It was straight in. Um, right. It was horrifying. You know, it was just yeah, absolutely horrifying and devastating. And then, of course, all the other dogs got involved. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um. And we spent three hours at the vet with the owner and stuff, and the owner's very good, and the dog is now in um, uh, a dog kennels because we can't have her back. She's just a delightful old dog. Right. Um, the recommendation was to have my girl put down. Okay. Um, who, was, who recommended uh, the, uh, the vet and my husband. Okay. Um, and I said, no, we, we need to wait. But she's kind of changed. But she's yeah. kind of hyper, yeah. if, if that makes sense. Um, she's yeah. kind of, and I'm also really heightened with her because we've got two Jack Russells, which are little dogs, and she's a 40-kilo dog. Right. Um, my How husband's like, well, what if she does that? She's How six. Old is she? Six. Six. Okay. And um, she's never had a fight before, never, nothing. It sounds you know, like it's quite a sounds like quite a complex situation going on there, and, and and I'll give you a little bit of advice. But with um with all aggression cases, it really does pay to get somebody in to help you to see the actual situation. Obviously, I can yeah. just go on what you're saying, but um, it sounds like um that dogs don't attack um for nothing there's always a reason okay and we may not spot it but there's always a reason and it's normally a resource guarding issue so there's normally something that the older dog would have had that the younger dog felt was theirs and although you may have said it just happened from nowhere it probably would have been creeping up a little bit at a time and then the the actual aggression was the final sort of straw because dogs are really good at de-escalating behaviors they don't actually want to fight because it doesn't really serve, serve their purpose at all does it really 
yeah. I mean, there had been a couple of incidences previously where she'd had a growl at her you know, yeah. a couple of days previously and stuff, yeah. and I think their so behaviour the was... Signs. Yeah, um, and then it just went really, really aggressive. Yeah. We've, she is muzzle trained, so she's wearing a muzzle most of the time. Right. Um, just um, to... What I, what I would say is that the the dog that you brought in wasn't part of the family, and, and we we take yeah. uh, we spend a lot of time introducing. We, we obviously bring in a few rescue dogs occasionally, and we spend a lot of time bringing that rescue dog into the family. And it takes mm. a lot of sort of training to make sure the other dogs yeah. accept that dog. So so just because she's attacked that dog doesn't necessarily mean she's going to now go and attack all the family members because they're family, you know. Yeah. Um, it same yeah. applies yeah. for humans, isn't it? If you go and beat someone up. Uh, not that you want it, but if you beat someone up outside, doesn't mean you're going to go and beat up all the your other, brothers and sisters, are you? The other issue with her is she has thyroid problems. Now, would that okay. uh, relate that, to that, aggression? That could certainly um, change her behaviour, so I would certainly get that looked at in the vets. Um, yeah. Again, it, I mean, in terms of um, euthanasia, that's a decision that you guys need to sit down and think about, but... Um, the situation, if she's never done that before and she hasn't done it since, then I don't know whether oh, that's, that wouldn't be something dog. I'd be looking at. Yeah, we, We've had a yeah. similar situation with dogs before and we haven't euthanised because we've managed the situation. So so it might be that you have to manage the whole environment for the dog so that they don't meet. Yeah. Um, but it yeah. sounds like it's very specific to that dog and it's probably very specific to that moment and, and whatever that resource was. But look, if you're worried about the interactions with your own dogs, get a trainer in, get a, get a behaviourist in, not a trainer, OK? Make sure that they are... A, registered um, canine behaviourist at least or, or they've done work like that before okay because you can make it ten times worse if you just get uh, someone that doesn't, un- doesn't really understand the situation mm, good luck with that yeah. Rochelle <coughs> um, quite a hard one that one though. yeah it is indeed yeah. Uh, 0800 844 747 is the number if you've got a question for Mindfulness for Dogs Darren Rowe and you can get it in right now actually Darren got quite a few questions coming in so going to take a very cool, quick break it. and then we'll crack straight back into them Sounds right good. here on the Sunday Cafe it's the Sunday Cafe with Mel Homer on Magic Talk. 0800 844 747 is the number if you have a question about your dog for animal uh, canine behaviourist Darren Rowe from Mindfulness for Dogs. Hey, Johnny, good morning to you. You're on with Darren. Johnny. Good morning. Sorry. Gotcha. Good morning, Johnny. <laughs> Vanished there. Now, we've got um, two Shih Tzus that we've had for 11 years. Um, yep. One of them is described as a fair growler. Right, okay. Uh, he was in the pound as a very young dog, and we rescued him. Um, the other one is a um, former assistance dog. Uh, I've got brain injury, and he was prescribed by um, my specialist. Right. Um, they're getting on now, and we have a new baby in the home. Right. And uh, one of them is very protective, and uh, the other one's uh, kind of scared of the child. Yeah, and the one that's um, protective is uh, he, he, he's um, still intact, and uh, they have a stormy relationship. So they're best friends, these two dogs. But every now and again, um, the intact male will attack the neutered fear growler. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it's very hard when you have two. You either have totally entire dogs and you manage the situation, or you have totally new to dogs. It's very hard when you've got a mixture of both, actually. Um, it does take a bit of management there. And and the attacking is just that, well, it could be many, many reasons I don't want to say exactly, but it's probably the, um, a, an entire male attacking the... It's normally the entire male attacking the, the, the neutered male, definitely. Um, They've got a bit of an, an ADHD dynamic going on, um, especially with eating. Um, the dominant male just doesn't want to eat until the other one goes for his food. And the other one's a little thief. So we <laughs> we have all these sort of dynamics at play, but as they're getting older, mm. um, just with a new newborn, I'm sort of looking to take mm. a bit more care. Um, yeah, so, I was thinking so, about neutering the um, the older um, intact male. Um, it's certainly so something you want to speak... Have any bit oh, it's something you want to... Someone you want to speak to your vets, it's probably not going to change his behaviours at this age. A lot of behaviours um, to do with that sort Learned. of thing are more habit, yeah. So, so yeah. it's probably not going to change a lot of his behaviours just by neutering. Um, but it is quite an intensive operation for an old boy like that, definitely. Um, I think more importantly, um, 
you want to be okay. thinking about how do you manage the the socialization of your children of, of your children or the dogs for your children if you want to call it that yeah because what's happened yeah. it, depending if you've not had kids around when they were younger they just won't know what they are so one thing you can really do which starts off because it's normally the screaming of the baby and the crying that really freaks them out and and one of the dogs mm. might get scared and then your your neuter dog might then attack your scared dog by the sounds of it that's that, i see that quite yes, often that's, um, that's what happens yeah yeah and it's almost like him saying get over yourself you know <laughs> sort of thing um yeah. so, so so what, what you want to do is you want to get, you can go onto YouTube and get recordings of babies crying and set up mm. your sort of baby area, whether it's where you're going to change and, and, and you don't need a baby or you could just get a doll um, and put them there and play those noises and set those boundaries okay. so the dog can't go anywhere near them. But when you play the right. noises, you want to just do one dog at a time. Yeah. So you want yep. to play the noises and then mm. just give the dogs lots of treats as you're playing those noises. Right. They have to hear the noise uh. before they get the treat so they can actually yeah. associate the two together. And then they'll start to yeah. think, every time they hear the noise of the baby crying, they get a treat, it's not a bad thing. Do it separately and then do it together, and then you can start to calm them down. But get in there now before the baby comes, because believe me, once you've had the, the oh, child... Oh, baby's here now. they can have time. Oh, OK. Yeah. Then you yeah, need five, to... You need... Nearly six months, and we've had oh, no right. incidents. Um, oh, OK. A, well, around baby, um, just right. a couple of close calls, um, but they, they're both very respectful, and they sort of... But before baby came, they they knew something was coming. <laughs> yeah, so so you just need to be really making sure you set those boundaries very clearly to yes. the dogs. And and the crate training is a really good thing. That when you've got the little one running around, dogs in the yep. crate, let the baby run around, then baby in the cradle, and then dogs running around, and and manage it really nicely because you can't afford to make a mistake. Because <laughs> one mistake and you know what's going to happen. Oh, no, you can't so, yeah. indeed. Hey, Johnny, um, thanks so much for your call uh, and yeah. best of luck with that one. It sounds like a, another... Tr you've yeah. got some good calls today. Some tricky calls some today, tricky yeah. tricky scenarios. God, these, are, these, are, these are ones I'd love to do an evaluation for. <laughs> Nothing straightforward here. Hey, I've got some texts <coughs> no. coming in for you too. If you do have a question well, for Darren, we've got about five more minutes worth of calls and texts. Uh, 3920 <laughs> is a text or you can also call. Calling's always good because you're guaranteed to get through. 0800 at the okay. moment. 0800 844 747. Uh, a question about elderly dogs and why they want to be outside more at night. I thought we had this one before. Why they want to be outside more at night even when it's freezing. I've noticed this behaviour in my old dog who eventually passed and my sister's current older dog. What is the reason for this? It's not something I've noticed before. I mean, my old dog wants to be inside all the time. Um, so we've got the opposite. Um, I'm actually uh, a bit of a loss of that one. I don't know mm. if that's something an old, specific to an older dog. It might just be um, that that's what they were used to when they were younger. Oh, maybe if they were young and they were outside and they've kind of got that dementia and they've gone back in time, that they might feel that's where they are. Or they might have just got lost. My old... Uh, you, what do you mm. call a 10-year-old an old dog? She's an old dog, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah. Well, my, so a senior dog from her. Yeah, she's a senior. My senior doesn't <coughs> want to go out. She just likes to tuck no. herself in nice, wear, nice yeah, and cosy and right in front of the heater, like sit, yeah, sitting literally exactly. on the heater if she can. Uh, another text in saying, how do I discipline a dog on a lead that lunges towards other dogs when we're out for a walk? Right, so first of all, we'll ditch the discipline because that enforces that you're challenging the dog all the time. If you take it a step back and say, well, does your dog actually understand what lead walking is about? Probably doesn't. It's probably pulling on a lead anyway. So you, first of all, you need to make sure that the place where you want your dog to be is something that they want to be there. So lots of rewards in that heel position, right? Do that without being outside. Sounds like there's two issues there. It's probably pulling on a lead, so you need to teach them how to walk. And then what you've got is actually you've got that fear aggression to other dogs. Or it might just be frustration that I can't go and play depending on the age so a little bit of work there um definitely probably a whole show in its own right <laughs> i would say so get yourself a trainer to help you on, on those scores definitely uh, start with start with rewarding the heel position that'll be a good start okay well maybe we should do another show on that one day um yeah, yeah. Look, so many good questions today we have a 10 month old blue staffy he's great in the crate he still chews a lot of the kids toys and books we're trying to discourage him from this behavior he has lots of chew toys but he prefers chewing the kids <coughs> toys instead we do often tidy but the two-year-old drops things which he finds any suggestions please to curb this behavior yeah did they say how old sorry the, this uh 10 month old 10 month okay, blue so not, not, a, not a puppy um the toys, probably the child's toys, he, he probably watched a child playing with the toys, so they're quite valuable as far as the dog's concerned. Um, what I would be doing is thinking about the balancing scales there. So the toys are more valuable than his toys, so you need to then work a bit harder and make his toys more valuable than the child's toys. There's always there's always a balance. Where's the value in, in whatever the dog's cheering? If, if if he's not playing with his toys, he's playing with the, dog's, uh, with the kid's toys, then the kid's toys are more valuable to him. So swap it around. Spend a bit more time with your dog playing. My son has a puppy. This is from Chris. My son has a puppy, about 18 weeks old now. 
He got her when she was just eight weeks old and she has a habit of eating her excrement. How do yeah. we stop her doing this? There's a posh word for that. Um, it's a really difficult one. Um, if she, excrement, not excrement. What was I talking excrement, about? Excrement, yeah, poo. Let's call it poo. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> it's, it's a really hard one, isn't it? And um, we've had the same kind of thing. It's called crypto, something if I remember rightly. Um, there's a couple of things you shouldn't do. So don't rub her nose in it. Don't go and put the poo in the hole and all that kind of stuff. Don't do any of those negative, nasty things. One thing, of, the most important thing is to pick up as soon as she goes. That's the easiest way because it becomes a habit. It's it, it's probably indicative of a lacking in the diet. So you might want to speak to a nutritionist about what she's eating or a vet. Um, and some foods I've found, um, some dry foods make it worse. So it just depends. I'm not, not at one in particular, but some certain dry foods will actually make it worse. Um, but the most important thing is pick it up. As soon as she goes, pick it up. Because if it's not there, she can't eat it. Mm. If it's not there long enough, she'll get out the habit and then it will just disappear unless it's a lacking in vitamins or something. Um, yeah. Coprophagia. So Coprophagia. Coprophagia. Oh, that's that the name. scientific I... name for poop eating. <laughs> I was nowhere near it. <laughs> the joys of the internet now. <laughs> Coprophagia. I know exactly. No, I just knew that off the top of my head. Oh, Aaron. did you? Oh, what, okay. <laughs> what on earth are you talking? Of course I didn't. Of course I googled it. Uh, how do I stop our female puppy peeing when excited? Peeing when excited. Well, you've got to understand that probably when she's peeing, she's not excited. She's probably a bit stressed and a bit um, fearful, especially if we're leaning over her. Quite often you see people who come in and they, they just go, oh, what a lovely puppy, and they lean all over and then the puppy pees. It's actually a bit of a fear-based pee. Um, there might be excitement there as well, but quite often it's fear. So so it's about coming down to your puppy, so sitting on the floor when you engage with them and getting them used to you and trusting you. That's normally the best thing. It's certainly not leaning in, especially if it's a small dog. Mm, um, okay. But it might just be puppy training, so... Fair again, <laughs> using the crate, you can use a crate to toilet train. Um, so we didn't really get much time to talk about crate training we? today, so oh, I hey. reckon we should save that for next week. I think so, yeah, but definitely valuable less, um, calls. So. Some yeah. great texts and calls, which is what <laughs> it's all guys. about uh, yeah. as well. Uh, thank you so much, Darren. Always a pleasure. And if people want to get in contact with you, Mindfulness for Dogs on Facebook or your website, mindfulnessfordogs.com would be the best way, wouldn't it? Yeah, certainly would. Or you can just give me a ring. <laughs> or, or give you a call as well, which the numbers are, of course, on the Facebook on the page and the website yeah. as well. Hey, Darren, we'll go and enjoy your freedom in Level 2. Uh, not jealous at all. And <laughs> we will talk next week. Thanks, Mel. See you later. You've been listening to Darren Rowe on The Mindful Dog, giving our canine friends a voice throughout the world. To find out more about what we do, visit our website at www.mindfulnessfordogs.com.